Swift scholars, welcome back. This is part two of our showrunner app. In part one, we got our JSON using an API call. In part two, we're going to put that data that we parsed out of the JSON into a table view with scrolling cells. So once again, this is a solution to an exam my students took earlier in the semester. Let's keep at it. Now for part two, let's set up that table view controller. So first, let's rename view controller to list view controller. Then we're going to embed the list view controller in a navigation controller. We're going to add a segmented control to the bottom of the list view controller. It should have two segments. The first segment, segment zero, should be labeled A to Z. The second segment, segment one, should be labeled rating. And we're going to anchor that 20 points to the left, to the right, and to the bottom of the safe area. Now we're also going to name the segmented control in our code, referring to that as segmented control. And we're going to refer to the code that executes when you click on a segment as segment pressed. So first, let's rename the view controller. We'll click on viewcontroller.swift. And remember, you don't want to just type over the name. We want to highlight view controller's name in the class and then right click and select refactor and rename. Now, this will not only rename the view controller, it will rename the file and it'll also rename the connection to the identity of the view controller so we don't get any errors. It's not vital to rename the comment. I like to do that anyway. Then let's head over to the main storyboard. We'll click on the dock area of list view controller and we'll head down to the lower right hand corner and select embed in navigation controller. Now for that segmented control, click the plus, bring up the library. We'll search for segmented control, drag it over toward the bottom of our view controller. With a segmented control selected, I'm gonna open up the attributes inspector. I can see that by default, I've got two segments, that's good. The segment zero, first segment is selected, but I'm gonna change the title to A-Z. Then I'll pull down and select segment one, the second segment, and change that title to rating. Press return, my segmented control is updated. Now I'm gonna select it one more time. Now a bit of a pro tip, I wanna pin the sides of the segmented control to the sides of the safe area. And when you do this, you wanna make sure that the control doesn't overlap with the safe area. Otherwise, the option to constrain a control to an element it overlaps with won't show up when setting constraints. So I'm just gonna drag my segmented control a bit above the bottom of the safe area to ensure that I don't have any overlap. I'm gonna go down here to add constraints and I'm gonna set my constraints to 20, 20, and 20, left, right, and bottom. And I'm not doing this here, but if you pull down on the arrow next to each of these 20 values, you would see that you're constraining to the safe area. Then add three constraints, and our segmented control is set up. Now we also wanna make sure that we add an outlet and an action for the segmented control. So I'm going to click on listviewcontroller.swift and option click on main storyboard to get into the assistant mode. I'll click on the segmented control, control drag over, let go to create the IB outlet. I'm gonna name this segmented control. I always check the type to make sure that I've dragged over the appropriate element and it says UI segmented control, that's great, click connect. Then for the action, we'll do the same thing. We'll control drag just before the last curly in this class, let go, and we'll call this segment pressed. I'm gonna change the type to UI segmented control. That verifies that I have indeed dragged from the UI segmented control. Click connect, and that's done. Now back to our exam. Now we wanna set up a table view control in the list view controller. We wanna constrain it zero points to the top left and right of the safe area and then constrain the bottom 20 points from the top of the segmented control that we just added. We're gonna add a single cell and perform any additional steps necessary when setting up the table view cell. Hint, don't forget to add the identifier for the cell. Then in the cell style, we wanna set that to right detail. We wanna set both labels in the right detail cell style so that they have the font property Avenir next condensed 24 points. The table view cell should not show any selection when clicked. Then we wanna do everything necessary to complete the setup of the table view and show the results of the get data call in the label on the left side of the table view cells. So this should show the results in the table view cells after we do the get data call. And just a hint, you know, if we were writing this as a production application, we might do a little bit more in our shows class to flatten our data out so that we don't have different levels of data that we've got to drill down. But in the interest of time and a timed exam, you don't have to go through the extra steps to flatten out this data structure. But what you will have to do is you'll need to access that first show array element. And then remember, after we get the array element, we're going to need to get into the show property, which is a struct type show, and then we need to use dot notation to be able to grab the name property. So if everything works, we should see our table view looks like the one that we see at the right. Let's head back to Xcode and get at it. So from the main storyboard, we'll click the plus to bring up the library. We'll search for a table view, drag it over and drop it roughly in the center of the safe area. Then we'll head down to add new constraints and we'll constrain to zero, 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 top left and right. And the bottom will be constrained 20 points from the top of the segmented control. 
add four constraints, table view is resized, looking good. Now with that table view selected over in the attributes inspector, we see that we can increase the number of prototype cells to one. Then click on that cell that you just added. You might want to head over to the document outline and make sure that that's clicked. We can see table view cell shows up in the attributes inspector. This wasn't mentioned in the exam, but you should know how to do this. In the identifier, we always give this an identifier name. We usually use capital C, lowercase e, l, l. We're going to need to refer to the string in our code. We're going to pull down on the style pull down menu and select write detail. Notice that gives us this title label on the left and this detail label on the right. And I'm going to click on that title on the left and command click on the detail on the right. We can see in the document outline that I've highlighted both of these. And I'm going to set the attribute for both of these under font. So I'll click on the little T to pull up the different fonts. I'm going to set this to a custom font, Avenir Next Condensed. And I'm going to set the font point size to 24. Now, I also mentioned we don't want any lingering selection indicator on the table view cell. We're still going to be able to select the cell, but we just don't want that indicator to be showing. So I'm going to click back on table view cell in the document outline. And under selection, it currently says blue, which is kind of strange because it doesn't really show blue in the standard configuration for Mac OS. But I'm going to go and select none instead. So that means that there's no selection indicator. And it's really important to do it in the table view cell, not in the table view. Because in the table view, if you selected the selection attribute and selected that to none, that would mean that the cell could not be selected. And that would be very bad because our app wouldn't work. So make sure you always set your selection to none in the table view cell and not the table view. Then we need to create an IB outlet for this table view. So I'm going to click on list view controller dot swift and I'm going to option click on main storyboard. We're in assistant editor mode and I'm going to control drag from the table view, not the cell. And I'm going to release at the top just below our existing IB outlet. And I'm going to name this table view lower camel case. We can see it's a UI table view. We can connect that and we've got an IB outlet. Now the rest is going to be in code, so I'm going to close out of the main storyboard. And I remind my students whenever they work with dynamic table views, remember, delegate data source, delegate data source. In view did load, we're going to type in table view dot delegate equals self, table view dot data source equals self. That means that iOS can make calls back to self, which is shorthand for this view controller, the list view controller whenever it needs us to execute some functions. And now we're going to put in some of those functions down in an extension. So down below the lowest curly in the class, we're going to write extension. We're going to extend a list view controller. That's the name of this class that we're in. We'll put in a colon and then remember delegate data source, delegate data source. So we're going to type in table view delegate. We see the protocol for UI table view delegate shows up in code completion. Press return to accept that comma table view data source, press return, code completion puts in UI table view data source, open and close curlies, Xcode starts to gripe because we haven't conformed to the protocol, we need a few functions in here, Xcode asks us if we want to add the stubs, click fix, Xcode stub me. That automatically adds the setup for the two functions that we need as part of these protocols. The first one, all we need to do is to return the number of elements in our array. So we'll say return shows.showArray.count. In the second one, cell for row at, the first thing that we're going to do is set up a cell. So we'll call that cell let cell equal to, then we call tableview.dq reusable cell. There are a few options in here, but we want to set the one that has an identifier and it says four, but that's four index paths. So we're passing in the index path, press return. For the identifier, we're going to put in the name of that cell identifier that we typed in as a string. So in between double quotes, remember we did this in the identity inspector for the table view cell on the main storyboard. It's capital C, lowercase e-l-l. -L. You've got to spell it exactly the same, case included. And then for the index path, we're just going to put in lower camel case index path. That matches up with the parameter that's being passed into this function. Now underneath this, I'm going to write the line return cell, but in between the let cell and return cell, we put in code to be able to configure this cell so that our data shows up in the cell. Now we're using one of the iOS default cell styles. Remember, we selected the right detail cell style so we can access that first label on the left hand side as text label. We just say cell, which refers to the table view cell we created in the line above this dot start to type in text text label shows up. We want to put a question mark in here because it's possible that you might set this up and not have the text label in there or delete it by accident. But if we forgot to do this, Xcode would remind us to add that question mark before we build and run. Then we say dot text to access the property that holds that label string. We're going to set this equal to shows dot show array. Then in brackets, we want to get the exact element of the array. So that's going to be index path. But remember, it's a dot row. Then to get to the name, I gave a hint in the exam. Remember, we've got to drill down to get to that data. We'll say dot show. This is of type show. And remember, after this or inside of this is another property named dot name. 
that's the string we want. We had to jump through an extra layer of structs. We didn't rationalize or reduce the number of layers in here in the interest of time, but this will give us what we need. Now, very important, if we want to show data in our table view, we need to call table view dot reload data. Now we need to do this after we've got data back from our get data API call. So we do this within these curlies in the closure that follows get data. Now this code that we're about to write in these curlies will not run until we've hit that completed keyword that we put inside of the get data function in our shows class. That indicates that we've got our data back from our API call. And once we hit that, we execute the code in the curlies. So that's where we're going to put table view dot reload data. So we don't reload data until we've completed. We have flagged that we've got data from our API call. But there's one more thing to consider. My students know that API calls happen on a background queue iOS apps can run tasks on multiple queues, and anything that updates the user interface, objects that are of type UI, like a UI table view, need to happen on the main queue. Otherwise, we get this glorious crash at runtime that shows up as a purple error, and we demonstrated this in an earlier app, and we showed how to fix it. We simply enter dispatch queue.main.async. That gives us open and close curlies here, and inside that we include any call to UI objects like self.tableview.reloadData. Then we can build and run hammer time, and we see data showing up in our text label on the left-hand side, nothing showing up in the right-hand side, but this is looking good so far. Let's head back over to our exam and finish off this table view. Now for part three, we're gonna update the data structures in our shows class, and we're gonna add any new data structures so that we can access all of the data that we want. So we should assume that the values that we are gonna get could potentially return nil. So that's a big hint. That means that we've gotta create these as optional values, and we'll need to deal with those optionals in our declarations, as well as handling data in our app. But we wanna make sure that we get language, genres, that's gonna be an array of strings, average, name, original, and summary. And if we take a look at the diagram down here, it actually shows us where those elements are. And it can give us a sense of the kinds of data structures we're gonna to need to create. Now, all of these are inside of show. And we see that name shows up. We've already got that at the root level of show. Language is also at the root level too. If we take a look at genres, well, genres has got this little square bracket right after it. And then we've got strings. So genres is gonna return a string array. Now, average is inside of a data structure called rating. And again, this is a data structure. It's just got one element called average. It's not an array. Network, similarly, has got a name inside. So we want to make sure that we create a network data structure that inside of that is going to have a string value called name. For image, we're also going to create a data structure that's going to be able to access a string called original. And we're going to use that to be able to access the image that we want to show up on our detail view controller. And summary is down here as well. We can see that we've got some HTML code in there, but I'll show you how we can deal with that in just a bit. So again, if we take a quick look at the JSON, we can see we want language, and we see the key language is associated with a string. In this particular example, language returns English. Genres has got a square bracket after it. We can see that we can collapse that. In this case, it's got three strings inside of it, so we can see genres is going to return a string array. Average is inside this guy rating here, so we'll go rating and then average, and that's a struct. This is not a square bracket, it's a curly. To get the network name, we're gonna to need to access network and create a struct that's gonna give us access to name inside of that. For image, we're also gonna create another struct that's gonna give us access to original, which will give us the URL that will return the original. And summary is a string right at the base level. So all these guys we just saw are gonna be part of the show struct that we created inside of our shows class. And we're gonna create some substructs inside of that as well. So let's head over to shows.swift. We don't need this score property anymore, so we can just go ahead and delete that. And I'm gonna add some properties to show why don't I add the ones that don't require any additional class? So we'll say var language colon string question mark. Remember, all of these are going to be optionals. Var summary colon string question mark. Then we'll create genres. Remember, that's going to be an array of strings. So we'll say var genres colon and then in brackets string question mark after the brackets because that's going to be optional. Again, you want to make sure that you spell this correctly. It's genres, plural. Then we're going to want to get the rating, which is going to be inside a struct that gives us access to average. So why don't we create a struct down below first? We'll say struct capital rating, we could have called it anything, but that's a pretty good name, colon codable, they always got to be codable, in between the curlies, we'll say var average colon, that will be double question mark, and then we can add a rating var lowercase rating, again, the same name that we have in our JSON, colon, and that's of type uppercase rating, and we'll put a question mark after it, because that's an optional too. Now we'll do the same thing to be able to get the name inside of our network, so we'll add another struct, struct, 
capital network colon codable open and close curlies var name colon string question mark and then up top in show we can add var network colon and that'll be capital network question mark so again that'll allow us to grab network as a structure which gives us the name inside of that to get the network name then we need to access a string called original that's inside of a struct called image so we'll add struct capital image colon codable open and close curlies var original colon that string question mark and now we can fill out this show struct underneath network we'll add var lowercase image colon uppercase image question mark now let's head back over to our list view controller. And this is where we need to update our table view to show the average in the detail text label that's at the right of our table view cell. Now one important consideration, average is an optional. So some of the average values returned for TV shows might not have any rating at all. And if that happens, JSON shows up as null and null shows up in Swift as a nil. So that's why we used optionals. So there are a few ways that we could deal with this. Here's one that our students should know from earlier work. We'll do this in our table view cell for row at function just before we return the cell. We can create an unwrapped value for our rating by saying if let rating equals shows dot show array in brackets, we're going to say index path dot row. Then we want to go into our show data structure. So we say dot show. And then inside of that, we want to go into dot rating. Now, remember, this is an optional of type rating. And then we want to go dot average. That will bring up our optional double value. Now, if this works, it's going to force unwrap whatever's an average, and it's going to put that value into something called rating. So we'll say open and close curlies. And we we can use rating on this line inside the curlies. We'll say cell dot detail text label question mark. Remember, detail text label is that second label that's inside of the standard table view cell dot text equals. And then in quotes, we'll say string interp rating. Now, if we can't perform this if let, that means we got a nil back if we take a look at show.rating.average. So in the else clause down here in between the curlies, we'll just copy the cell detail text label dot text and we'll set that equal to just in between quotes, a dash. Then we can build and run, hammer time, no errors, and we see indeed over on the right hand side, we've got numbers showing up when we have values in there, and whenever we have no values in there, JSON returns a null, which is a nil, we have a dash. So excellent, we're done through part three, we've got our table view all set up, we'll deal with the segmented control in a future video, but in the next one, we'll set up our detail view controller so we can start to see the detail on any of these records we select.